Hey guys, welcome back to my next video in my series for uh, my strategies and tips. And uh, in this game, um, we're going to look at a couple different things that kind of took place in this game. One of the one of the key things ends up happening at the end of the game. I've never actually seen th this happen. Um, to be honest, I've never even heard of it happening. Uh, I've never seen any replays. With that being said, I'm sure it's happened before. There's no way this is the first time. So that's going to be sort of my uh, precursor uh, for you to want to see what happens at the end of this game. Uh, but it really is unique. I've never seen it. If you've seen it, uh, you know, that's great. And if you have video of it, I would love to see um, see it as well. Uh, so be sure to to link that in the uh, the comment section below, because honestly, I I would love to see I'd love to have a whole bunch of videos of what happens uh, <laughs> to to see. Anyway, we'll go ahead and just kind of jump into what's going on in this game. So uh, the plane comes along, and if I remember correctly, the plane kind of came at this angle, um, so we were over the water. So there's a bunch of us who are in this area. Um, but it's not the majority. The funny thing that kind of happens with this group is we don't really run into each other. There's a couple fights that take place down here. Um, but Night Stalker, Dr. Tim, Bob Dangle, Dadney, uh, and I even think Lucky Days was over here. Um, all of us are basically uh, at the end of the game. It, it's really kind of funny. It just kind of worked out um, that it just worked out this way. I don't know. Uh, Dalek, um, I don't remember him. I don't even know where he gets uh, taken out. Uh, it's at some point. But the rest of us mostly get to the end of the game. Um, about the last five minutes or so, um, for the most part. Uh, Dadney actually has some, some really good kills in this game. I don't know if I'll be able to kind of show them all, but he had a couple really good kills uh, at, a, at a really good distance. So... We'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, we're fast-forwarding here. So at the end of the day, nothing really happens here. So I'm going to go ahead and fast-forward and kind of show you. Um, everybody's still kind of doing their thing, grabbing their stuff, and nothing else really happens. So uh, this circle is about to close. <clears throat> was this the second circle or was this the first circle? Yeah, we're 11 minutes in. That's the uh, second circle. So this was the second one. So we're getting ready to have now the third circle. The odd thing about this is, so, you know, the second circle just finished. So now here's the third circle. And we get down to 28 players. That's not unheard of. But um, we're still, you know, technically in the second circle. And we'll fast forward a little bit. And uh, down to 25 players. And at this point... Um, like I said before, no one is really running into each other, uh, the groups that were down here in the south. Um, but we are still 48 seconds out from this circle coming in, and we're already down to 23 people. And this is a huge, massive area um, for 23 people uh, at this point. So it was just kind of odd. Um, all that's really happening with me is I'm just moving north, uh, everybody else sort of doing the exact same thing. Um, there finally is a fight that took place over here. Oh, he's got a cool skin for a DMP. That's a... Uh, that was... I forget who. Uh, Bob Dangle. Yeah, he was down there. So he just got taken out by Dadney. Uh, he is currently sitting in uh, this building over here and he ends up taking out that guy uh, Bob Dangle he ends up getting another uh, kill with uh, some other guy that comes running down into here and is kind of just running in every direction and finally runs into the building and that may just takes him out um, it's like guy was making so much noise uh, <laughs> All he had to do was just sit and wait because this guy was obviously going to run to him. So that's what happens there. Uh, again, not much really going on. 
There's not much strategy taking place at this point. All I'm trying to do is simply get to the next circle. So we're down to 15 players, and this is just now uh, you can see you know how big this circle is. And I was streaming this game, and I even made the comment, like, you know, I cannot believe we're down to this many players in this large of a circle um, because it's such a wide area. Um, you know, we might not lose anybody for a little while, uh, but we do. So all this ends up happening at this point. Again, um, I'm in the next circle. I'm getting kind of lucky that I'm not having to go great distances to get to the next one. Um, but everybody pretty much, you know, you can't see them. They're within the kilometer of me at this point. But uh, most of them are over here on the outskirts. And there ends up being a ton of fighting that takes place up here. So whether these guys were coming down through here or they're coming from the north or even just from the east, um, there's a, a bunch of fights that take place. Uh, Razzle Dizzle will make an appearance in a little bit. So Razzle actually ends up going into... Gatka. Now, at this point, I'm over here in the observatory, and I'm really just kind of waiting to see where this next circle is going to be. Um, there is absolutely no reason at all for me to take off at this point. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't need to go out hunting for anybody. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody around me because there's always the chance that they are. It's not that I'm afraid to get into a fight, but I'm more concerned about getting into the next circle, knowing where it is, and then how I want to get there. So all I'm doing at this point is I'm just waiting to kind of see where this thing's going to hit. Do I need to go north? Do I need to go east? You know, you know, northeast? Uh, you know, what is it I need to do? And so the circle finally comes in and closes, and the circle ends up being uh, over here. And it's a fair distance from where I'm at. Um, I wasn't worried about the distance. The only thing that kind of concerned me is um, that I was thankful for uh, was that I wasn't going to have to go north because I didn't want to have to deal with this field. And there's a bunch of planes over here. But the area right through here is not that bad. There's a little bit of cover there. Um, it's not the worst possible uh, area to run. So... Uh, I've got about a minute to go. Uh, I know that I've got to get to the outskirts of Gatka at this point. So you can kind of see it from my point of view. Uh, and I keep looking left because if I see anybody coming around uh, the side over there, um, you know, I got to be ready to basically get into that fight. And all I really had at this point was uh, an AKM uh, with a two scope and uh, a UMP. I couldn't find much more. I raided a ton of houses and I just couldn't find anything better. So, uh, but because they haven't, you know, they upped the stats for the UMP, I've actually really enjoyed having it. <coughs> it's a lot better uh, of a gun now. So I get all the way over here. I'm not in the circle yet, but what I want to do before I get into the circle is I want to kind of double check and make sure that I'm protected from being seen on the right. Um, so I lay down behind the rock and I was scoping out Gatka. I was trying to see if I saw anybody in the windows. I didn't. So I go ahead and move into the circle, uh, get down into the grass. And I'm trying to position myself uh, because I know this area uh, really well um, because I jump in this area a lot. Um, I knew this was really the best place to be because this is going to be the best cover from anyone who may be sitting in these windows with a, a car 98 or an SKS or, you know, whatever. You know, I didn't want to get picked off and I knew this was kind of the best spot for me to be in. So these uh, next circle hits and again, it's a little bit of a run for me, but here's what I know. Um, I know that I'm going to have to run around the back of Gadka, but I realized something. First of all, once I heard Razzle Dizzle, love the name, uh, jump into his dune buggy, that gave me a lot of confidence that there was nobody else in Gadka. Now, there always could be, but by somebody jumping into a vehicle like that, what it kind of tells, and I, and I don't hear any gunshots at all, it kind of tells me that, you know, that guy whoever he is, had been in Gatka, was looking in every direction, 
never saw anybody, so he knew it was safe to just go jump in his car and take off. So I go ahead, work around the back, and I take off running. And the place that I'm trying to get to is this place right over here. This is a fantastic place to be um, for basically this circle. And the reason is because there is a elevated hill here. And this hill is going to provide me a ton of cover because I've got to cross this field and this field. And that's about the biggest risk that I've got leaving Gatco. So I've got to get over to here, but as long as I get over, over to here into this area, I know that I'm basically going to be safe from anyone who's sitting over here, even on an elevated hill, uh, who's got a sniper rifle, that they're not going to see me. I'm going to be well, well hidden. So I end up making it the whole direction. Uh, I get all the way up here, uh, get into the shadows, and make sure I'm in the circle, and get down, and just kind of like, okay, well, I'm in a good spot now. So I at least can now wait and see where this next circle is. So Razzle Dizzle has put himself over here. Now he's running up into the circle. And here's where I end up using uh, what I like to call uh, hugging the blue line and knowing that people like to do that. So I take a little bit of damage there, but I, I, I crawl up. Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you here real quick here on the map. So... Here's where I'm at. You guys know where I am and how I've got the hill right there on my left. And you can see where this next circle is. So um, as soon as this happened, I actually thought to myself, like, okay, well, I'm, I'm guaranteed to get into the next circle. That won't be an issue. Uh, I'm not going to have to really run for it. But at the same time, I'm probably going to be able to take somebody out because they're going to end up wanting to hug this blue line. So I knew that these buildings were right over here. So in my head, I'm saying to myself, if someone's in one of these buildings, there's a really good chance that they don't want to expose themselves over here to anybody who's over in this field or anybody who's up under this hill. So they'll hop out here and then they'll run back behind this blue line because people who play PUBG know that Wherever the next circle is, the shortest distance between the blue line and the, and the white line is going to end up being the slowest way that it comes in. So this will obviously be the fastest, this will be the shortest. So hugging the blue line allows you to kind of move into a position where you gain more time to make the next circle. So it's a common strategy, practically everybody knows it, everybody does it. So there are moments when it kind of happens like this and it's a perfect scenario you got to sort of recognize that and don't go into the to the next circle stay where you are wait and just pick somebody off if they come along because there's a really good chance that that's going to happen so the only real mistake that we're going to look at in this game uh, is going to end up being from camo man here and i don't know if the guy's new to the game but i think i actually know what his problem is and um We'll look at it here in a second because uh, I'll end up rewinding it. So that's where he's at, and uh, we'll kind of look at his situation here in a minute. So Razzle Dizzle is moving up towards me, so I go ahead and kind of switch over to my AKM, and I put my red dot on the AKM, and lo and behold, all of a sudden... He's right in front of me. Take him out. So the moment this happens, I I could use some more things, but I don't want to raid this guy. I don't want to raid him just yet. And the reason is because I know there's still 43 seconds to go. Um, this is plenty of time for somebody else to hug that blue line. Uh, and on top of it all, I, I you know by firing my AKM, I, I, what I'm doing is giving away my position. So because I'm giving away my position, you know, I kind of want to just give it a second, see if somebody else ends up showing up. So I finally move up, kind of raid Razzle Dizzle here. He ends up having a silencer, uh, which is cool. I love having the silencers on the guns. And so all of a sudden I heard footsteps. And lo and behold, it's the second guy hugging the blue line. So I take advantage of that. Boom, boom, boom. So now we're going to look at 
the mistake that takes place. And back up a second. Uh, just a little bit more because you need to kind of hear that that gunfight. Two, two, two. Okay, so we're gonna look at it from Camo Man. So Camo Man is down by this tree. Now you can obviously see where I'm at uh, up on over just over the ridge. So um, I'm right there. We're gonna kind of look at it from his first person perspective. And if you just kind of listen. Um, if you're watching this on your TV, uh, you're not going to have on headphones, and uh, you won't be able to tell as well, I don't think. Um, but what? Okay, so those gunshots were right behind Camo Man, right behind him, and he's looking all around. He does not know where those shots are coming from. Uh, he's kind of looking in every direction, so we're going to keep looking at it from his perspective um, when you end up hearing the gunshots um, when I take out the next guy. Um, so I'll take out the next guy, and it's just sort of the same thing, same scenario happens here. Um, here we go. Neo Zero Cool, about to meet his fate. So the silencer does make a difference, but that is still going on in the right ear. So the best that I can kind of figure it is this guy should know exactly where these gunshots are coming from, and he doesn't. He does not know where these shots are coming from. And I'm amazed that I didn't get the guy down immediately. Um, I, You know what? It's worth showing because I, I did a really poor job right here. Um, show it from my perspective. I actually didn't expect there to be anybody right there. And so all of a sudden I see somebody. And I'm amazed I didn't get him down. But I kind of reacted too quick. Uh, because I was trying to get down there and I just thought, my gosh, if, if, if there's somebody right there, they ought to be looking right at me and the guy isn't. And uh, I don't know, I just, uh, I, it's an area of the game I definitely need to get better. Is I should be able to get that guy down uh, immediately. So that's the only real big mistake that happened this game that I could kind of tell is I think what this guy is doing is uh, playing. Uh, and he's using speakers. He's not using a headset. Because there's no way that I can imagine someone with a headset um, not knowing exactly where those shots were when they were ringing out. I, it's it's kind of beyond me. I don't see how it's possible. So I think if you want to play PUBG without a headset, knock yourself out. Uh, just make sure you've got you know your surround sound. Um, you know, use the system that you have. But if you can definitely play with a headset um, because it will help you figure out exactly where everybody is where all the gunshots are coming from uh, when you hear footsteps etc etc so I, I don't know how much of a st strategy or tip that is but definitely a tip and uh, for all I know the guy's brand new to the game and he, he doesn't you know really comprehend maybe the distance I don't know so I'm not dogging the guy um, it's just kind of obvious that he didn't know where the shots were coming from. So, as we move into the final part of this game, um, what I didn't really touch on, uh, I mentioned earlier very briefly, is um, I heard a ton of, there was a, a ton of gunfire going on up in this area, um, even when I was coming from over here. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of chaos going on up here. So I knew that most of the players were going to be over on this side. What I didn't expect was that I would be the only person on this end uh, of the map. Uh, and all these guys would be over here. So just to kind of get you up to speed on kind of what happens here. Um, HR Critsit um, actually saw me uh, a minute ago and took a shot. So... Uh, I figure it's actually kind of worth showing what what it is, what he did, um, and how I got very lucky right here. So he's moving along. 
uh, he's staying down, but he ends up getting enough of a gap um, sort of between these uh, we, uh, wheat stalks or whatever they are. So he's looking right there, and he sees me move. And you can kind of see me moving there. And so he takes a really good shot, does damage. I start running over to the other side, and then I immediately drop down. And his field of vision is blocked thanks to the wheat. So thank you very much, wheat. Uh, I guess I should thank the devs for making really good wheat that's nice and thick. Uh, so, I don't know that that's happened. All I know is I took a shot. I wasn't 100% sure where it happened from. So, I got down and found some cover. The I'm still in the next circle. The next circle hits, and I know I'm going to be able to move just kind of right over to here. <laughs> so, lucky days. Um... He ends up taking out that guy, and it's down to four of us. Uh, Dabney was the guy that we saw earlier up in the buildings over there. Um, he had a couple really good kills this game. We didn't get to show um, show him, but um, he played really well. Uh, but unfortunately for him, he gets taken out right then and there. Lucky days. Uh, saw movement over there, pulled up the SKS, got him down with two shots. So we get down to three of us. And I know that these guys have got to work them, uh, work their way into the circle. And I know where one guy is because I can hear the gunshots. But I don't know where the other guy is. He may already be in the circle. He may not. So kind of what happens at this point, and uh, we're going to fast forward a little bit because I end up chucking a grenade. Um, or somebody else chucked a grenade. I didn't throw that one. Or maybe I did. I can't remember. Yeah, I did throw that one. Uh, but I had more grenades on me, uh, and that will play a role here in a minute. So uh, Lucky Days ends up moving into this bush, and for whatever reason, he's just convinced um, that there is somebody else over on this side. So he goes ahead and gets up and is standing up. right there and HR ends up seeing him right there and here is where we are going to slow it down for you to see so guys this is the chicken dinner that uh, was not expected uh, I've never gotten one this way before I've never seen it happen this way before and we'll look at it in slow-mo and uh look at it in regular time because I, I know what happens uh, to HR I, I know kind of what would have been going on in his mind at this point so I hear the uh, gunfire that just took place so now I know where the last guy is I know that this guy is somewhere right in front of me he's not over here anywhere he's right in front of me right over here so what do I do I chuck a grenade. I just want to throw a grenade and just kind of see if I can get lucky. And it ends up hitting right here. There's the grenade I just threw. It lands right there. He chucks a smoke grenade. I didn't cook the grenade, by the way. And my grenade goes off. <laughs> and blows him straight out of the circle and into the blue zone and this poor guy all of a sudden is taking damage and I don't think he knows where he's taking damage from so he, <laughs> this poor guy I honestly I've never seen this happen before <laughs> he, he gets blown out of the circle and he doesn't really know what's going on so I end up getting the chicken dinner right then and there. Uh, I, I've just never seen that happen before. So what I want to do is just kind of look at it in real time. So you can kind of see it from his perspective. Um, it's right after Lucky Day this goes down here. So we'll just kind of show it from his perspective. He sees enough movement there. Boom, boom, boom. Gets him down. I chuck the grenade right after, you know, those gunshots go off. Well, not immediately, but I chuck it. And now all of a sudden he's taking damage. 
and he can't quite figure out where the damage because he thinks I, I'm I'm thinking that what he's thinking is that he's taking damage and it's from uh, me shooting him. There, there's no part of me that thinks for one split second that he actually realized what was going on until it was over. So I think he thought he was getting shot at um, more than anything. But man, that just my heart goes out to the guy. It really does. So this is from my perspective. You know, I have no idea what's just occurred. And so as far as I know, I threw a grenade and the guy didn't die. And then all of a sudden, winner, winner, chicken dinner pops up. It was unique. It was interesting. I've never seen that happen before. So if anybody sees this and you know of another time where somebody got a chicken dinner this way, um, be sure to uh, post a link in the comments because... Um, I would love to see it because I didn't even know this was possible, um, you know, of all the ways to win. So it's just really unique. So uh, at the end of the day, guys, uh, thanks so much for watching the video and um, be sure to leave comments and uh, uh, come back because I, I like putting up these uh, strategy videos. And definitely if you have any good strategies, you know, feel free to share them uh, and all that and feel free to link to anything also for strategies for PUBG. So all guys, we will see you next time. See you.